What if, you start your day with a cup of coffee and yoga? As you walk to your car, a man covers your head, ties you up, and kidnaps you. You screamed for help, but you were helpless. Little did your kidnapper know that you were not just your average white girl. Welcome to, What a Story. When our story begins, Kathy is going about her daily routine. In addition to working at her flower store, she attends her yoga class and enjoys breakfast at the cafe across the street. A strange man named Robert Lewis has been stalking her the entire time. As Kathy is at yoga, Lewis waits outside and examines her car before getting a revolver, a plastic bag, zip ties, tape, and a newspaper from his trunk. His maid, Alondra, calls him to clarify that everything is fine for tonight. After the yoga sessions are complete, Kathy interacts with another woman in the bathroom and makes it apparent that she doesn't like it when she makes it seem like she wants to cheat on her husband. After that, she heads to the parking lot to leave, but Lewis pounces on her just as she gets to her car. He covers her head with the plastic bag and throws her to the ground. She cries out for help, but the only person in the area has headphones on, so they cannot hear her. He warns her he'll murder her if she makes another sound before taping over her lips and tying zip ties around her wrists and ankles. Lewis leaves Kathy on the floor while he returns to his car, waits for the car next to Kathy to move out of the area, and then parks there. He picks up Kathy there and places her in his trunk before leaving. As a police car stops next to his, on the way to his house at the traffic light, he maintains his composure and avoids raising any red flags. The garage door gets stuck halfway when he arrives home, so he must finish lifting it by himself, and props a broom under it to hold it in place. The trunk enters the garage first. He carries Kathy through the home after removing her from the trunk while her bloodied feet create splatters on the floor. She is then led to a room. Lewis locks and conceals it behind a false wall and a table with a vase. Lewis starts cooking, while Kathy fights against her restraints. Lewis puts some food in the oven and goes to his car to retrieve his things and her bag. Then he visits Kathy. He tells her there's no need to shout because the walls are soundproof, and he'll remove the tape so she can give him her name. Lewis removes the tape after Kathy nods in agreement, but she immediately starts screaming again. Lewis leaves her alone and enters his office. He checks his computer to ensure everything in the room is being recorded, then mutes the sound. He then begins to wipe up the bloodstains on his floor. Kathy finally manages to stand up and begins pounding the door with her entire body, but to no avail. She tries to cry for help as she gets as close to the vent as possible, but no one can hear her because the house is in a rural area. While listening to an old news that mentions about a case being revived as evidence of three unnatural deaths, Lewis loads his gun and goes to see Kathy again. She begs him not to touch her and offers him the $50,000 she has in savings, which Lewis remarks is a substantial sum for someone in her line of work. He wants her to tell him her name, not money. He is disappointed by her response of, Kathy Newland, so he walks out. Lewis returns to the kitchen and searches Kathy's bag for something useful, but comes up empty-handed. He then resumes watching old news programs. This time, according to the reporter, the evidence was insufficient to establish an unnatural death, and the families intended to appeal the ruling. Lewis resumes his cooking while Kathy uses all her strength to bend over and get her bound hands in front of her. Kathy is waiting for Lewis behind the door when he comes to pick her for lunch and attacks him immediately. She kicks him until he's on the floor, and once outside, she takes the vase from the table and slams it on his head. Kathy drags herself to the office and tries to call the police, but Lewis shows up and shoots it. She snatches a paperweight from the desk and swings it at him as he gets closer, briefly knocking him out and leaving him on the floor. She enters the kitchen, where she discovers her cell phone in her bag. 
But the phone is out of service, so she rummaged through the drawers to find a knife, and sever the ankle ties before attempting to leave the house. When Kathy questions Lewis about his knowledge of her job, he only sit at the table and extend an invitation to lunch. He asks her again while eating, and she responds that her name is, Kathy Newland. Lewis explains that knives are inferior to guns, so Kathy agrees to sit at the table but refuses to eat anything. He again requests her name. She receives the same response from Kathy, which enrages him. Kathy bites him to get him off of her, then she encloses his neck with her tied wrists to strangle him. When she tries to flee, he punches her senseless and drags her back to the room. His housekeeper Alondra is waiting for him when he enters the kitchen. He never inquired whether he would require her today, so she came over. When Louis dismisses her and tells her she is not needed, Alondra insists on fixing the shattered dishes and tending to his wounds. Alondra hesitates but agrees when Louis begs her to leave again, telling him that his daughter, now at a sleepover, will return the following day. Louis straightens up the mess, arranges the flowers in a fresh vase, and cleans the bloody knife before checking on Kathy and applying butterfly bandages to her wounds. After that, he takes a shower, and tends to his injuries before finishing his lunch in front of the television. He views more old news videos on the Charleston 3, a case in which three patients passed away at a hospital in Charleston under suspicious circumstances. Kathy goes to get her phone from her jeans, where it is hidden, but there is no service. She puts it away after seeing a crack in one of the floor tiles, and begins working to try to remove the shard from the floor. Lewis pays Kathy a second visit, this time with a chair. He then starts probing her about her personal life, asking for her name, birthday, hometown, school, major, number of siblings, parents' occupations, and involvement with the church. Lewis is not satisfied with any of Kathy's responses. Continuing to urge her for the truth, he claims to have followed her for months and is aware that everything she just told him is false. Finally, when he shoots the wall. Kathy modifies her story. Natalie and Stephen is her real name. She grew raised with her identical sister Kathy, who killed herself after their father, a football team doctor, dumped their mother for a cheerleader. Natalie persevered, much like her mother, and continued her studies in nursing. Lewis informs her that she must be wondering why he kidnapped her at this point, but he doesn't elaborate before leaving the room once more. As soon as the door is shut, Lewis and Kathy experience emotional collapse. Natalie continues working on the damaged floor tile, as Lewis returns to the living room to watch old videos of him and his family. She attempts to progress there but is unsuccessful, so she pulls out her phone again and presses it up against the vent, until she finally receives a signal. She dials and attempts to get help, but the signal is poor. Meanwhile, Lewis notices a cell phone in the footage and reveals that she brought her phone to the room. He comes in as soon as she hides it, but takes it out of her pants and breaks it, scattering the pieces on the ground. Lewis confronts Natalie about her employment at All Angels Hospital and inquires about the victims who mysteriously passed away while in her care, including his wife Alana. Natalie tells him that all nurses were proven to be innocent during a trial and claims she left the area because she needed a new beginning. Lewis doesn't buy it and explains to her all the red flags that he found. Despite never taking her wedding ring, Alana was missing it. She was also high on GHB, a substance typically used to render abuse victims unconscious. Lewis warns Natalie that if she doesn't reveal her involvement, she'll also perish because he well understands that she did it. After making sure his PC still captures every sound in the room, Lewis returns to watching old family recordings. After seeing his deceased wife on the screen, he returns to the room and threatens Natalie with his revolver until she finally agrees to confess. She and her sister were raised in a deeply religious household that adhered to the Bible's teachings. Kathy confronted their father about having an affair with her best friend after learning about it, and as a result, he left them, leaving them to live in humiliation. 
Because of something that wasn't their fault, the community shunned the family. This is what ultimately led Kathy to commit suicide. Natalie has devoted her life to serving others and helping those in need because her patients have always trusted her with their secrets, even the dark ones. All three of her victims had broken the law in some way, John had two wives, Jane had lied to the police about her husband assaulting her in exchange for a divorce settlement, and Alana had cheated on her husband. Lewis finds it hard to believe, but Natalie outlines all the cases. This explains why Alana was discovered intoxicated in a hotel bar, without her ring, her lover had even paid her a visit in the hospital. Natalie admits having killed the Charleston Three for being sinners, and Lewis leaves the room, unsettled after hearing about his wife's secret. When he returns to the living room and views another video, in which Alana acts uncomfortable while ignoring a call on her cell phone, he begins to believe Natalie. Lewis experiences a breakdown due to the confirmation, and he begins damaging household items while yelling in rage. He then exits the house and gets into his car, leaving Natalie to extract the tile shard from the floor using a piece of her phone she had found. Lewis arrives at the lake he and his wife used to frequent, when he is met by two police officers who inquire about his injuries and residence while looking into a report about a vehicle resembling his. They release Lewis after looking at his license and vehicle trunk, and Lewis decides to go back home. As soon as he enters the room, he leans down in front of Natalie and tells her she has no right to kill his wife. He also asks her to give herself in. As a response, Natalie uses a floor shard to stab him in the shoulder. Lewis is able to get the shard out of his shoulder, but Natalie hits the wound before leaving the room. She searches the kitchen for the gun but can't locate it, so she takes a knife and returns to the room. Natalie places her arm at the door to halt Lewis, who waits for her and tries to lock her in again. After a brief struggle, Lewis flees and eventually makes it to the kitchen, where he discovers his revolver on the floor. As he picks it up, Natalie appears and knocks it out of his hand before engaging in combat with him. Eventually, she is able to overcome him and take the pistol. Alondra, who is now entering the home with Lewis's daughter Summer, interrupts them. Natalie shoots Alondra, then captures Summer when she tries to reach her dad, she points the gun at her head and tells him Summer isn't really his child. Lewis says it doesn't matter since he won't speak to anyone, provided she doesn't harm his kid, and tells Natalie she doesn't have to give herself in. Natalie rejects this because the police would still track her call, but Lewis informs him that he has taped all she said. Summer seizes the opportunity to bite Natalie's arm and flee. Lewis immediately tackles Natalie, who then throws her to the ground and chokes her until she passes out. Lewis shoots Natalie after she rises again, then leaves to look for his daughter. He finds Summer hiding in the room and takes her away with him. They stop by the office to take the USB stick with the recording, and Summer notices Natalie is gone. Lewis hurries her inside the garage. Natalie tries to shoot him, but the gun runs out of ammo, so they resume fighting. Summer exits the car. Lewis gets attacked by Natalie with gardening equipment, until she overcomes him and places a pitchfork on his chest to kill him. Lewis pushes it, and hits Natalie. The door crashes on her, trapping her body as she loses consciousness. Lewis apologizes to Summer, calling her his child, and gives her a bare embrace as the cops show up. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next story.